BC today. It is now Wednesday, August the 30th. And um, after a couple of nice updates here, as we finish out the last week of summer, it looked like, at least in the morning, that uh, we were going to give maybe a little bit of that back, not a lot. And then we got sort of a, a slew of different, technically weaker than expected economic data. And um, markets tended to kind of perk up right before the open. And then we opened up, we were up about 150 points, um, you know, right after maybe an hour after the open and just sort of drifted sideways a little bit lower. We actually held on to gains for most of the day um, and we ended up closing up on the day uh, marginally for, uh, for, for today, which is, which is Wednesday. We're up about 37 points on the day. So biggest news on the day. Um, uh, again, we had some yields come down a little bit. Uh, Two-year yields are now at 487. Again, they were at 510 a few days ago. So that's a development. And some of the reason is, is for, uh, again, some of the data that's come out has been a little weaker. It's actually sort of porridge is just right. It's not really falling off a cliff. It's just slowing down a little bit. And so if there's those in that soft landing camp, that's what we're seeing as of right now, I guess this week, there's a number tomorrow. I think that'll paint uh, another part to that picture and then another on Friday, really. Um, but uh, payroll, ADP payroll out today uh, came out at 177. It was 200 expected. So jobs number was a little less than expected. Just keep in mind that for July, it was revised. That was for August. For July, it was revised up from 324 thousand for the month to 371,000. So, you know, last month was showing a more robust labor market. This is a little less. Technically, if we're going to stay around the sort of 150-ish level or, or, or thereabouts um, on, uh, on payroll for, the, for months, it's about where we were before the pandemic. So that's kind of more in line. So I do feel like this stuff is starting to come back in line. I don't feel like it needs to necessarily, and that's a driver of what is causing inflation to go lower. But I think that it is something the Fed looks at, and I think that these these all of these things matter. Um, GDP was actually revised a little lower today as well. It was estimated at 2.4. Markets were expecting the revision to be unchanged, and it came in at 2.1, which is a little lower, although it was still better than what we had originally expected or feared, I guess, for the quarter. So uh, markets took that part in stride. But you had a little bit weaker on, on jobs, a little bit weaker on growth. Again, it's giving more fuel to the uh, soft landing camp or, or the, the peak Fed rate narrative uh, camp. But um, you also had PCE, at least core PCE for the quarter, not for the month, for the quarter, come in at 3.7 versus a 3.8 expected today. So a little bit lower jobs numbers, a little bit lower GDP revision, and a little bit lower inflation all speaks to interest rates calming down a little bit. Uh, chances for a Fed hike in September are still a done deal basically and then november and december is now more like 55 45 so that the market is starting to believe that we can get slow a little slow down in inflation and some of the metrics the fed looks at um, but it isn't totally convinced yet there's a, a, a pce number out tomorrow for the month of july that probably will be looked at quite quite heavily and can move this a little bit this narrative and then there's a payroll number the non-farm payrolls the actual payroll number is going to be out on friday and I think there's 235,000 expected on payroll. And then for tomorrow, we're expecting for the month of July, a 0.2% increase in, in PCE, which if you annualize that is right in that sort of 2% range the Fed is looking for. Um, both of those things can change, change this, uh, this narrative on markets hanging in there for the rest of the month, because it's still a negative month, although it's less negative than it was a week ago. So we'll take it. Pending home sales today were uh, better than expected. They were up 0.9%. Uh, there was actually a decline of 0.5% expected. Um, so more continued resiliency in housing. Um, you know, the, the average payment, um, if you look at the national home price right now, and then the national mortgage average, the 30-year mortgage average, technically the, the average payment is now at an all-time high, uh, in dollar terms at least. So it's the, it's the highest ever, which makes intuitive sense, just given where rates are and given that over time prices tend to go up, again, with inflation that that would make sense to that equation would continuously go higher over time in some sense. But um, again, I think we wrote about this before, but the average person that has a mortgage is not paying the sevens. They're paying, you know, still three and a half percent. So the prices just haven't really reflect reflected all, all of that much. But all that to say, there's um, a little announcement or, or big announcement, sorry, uh, big press release out on some new hires that we had, which we're really proud of. 
Um, we had a promotion internally uh, for Joe Klein, who is now the COO of the Bonson Group, who brings a ton of organizational skill and, and ability to, uh, to be intentional and, and drive you know, some of the growth internally between our departments and, and uh, help us achieve a, a higher level, a higher standard of, of what we can offer for clients. And we're really proud and, and grateful for him and excited about that. We have um, Eric Dreyer that's joining us as the director of our planning group. As Joe moves up, Eric is stepping into that directorship of, of planning. He's got eight plus years of experience. Um, he'll be in our Minnesota office. And then we had James Andrews out in our California office in Newport Beach join from um, a Goldman Sachs affiliate um, and in our private wealth advisor group. So it's three amazing people and just wanted to give a, a special little shout out on, D, on uh, DC today about for them. Press release is in the link there, and it's much better, better spoken than the way that I'm able to, to articulate it. So please read that. With that, um, we'll kind of get into it. David will be back with you tomorrow on DC Today. He was on a little trip for a few days um, that I think was changed because of some weather. But uh, he'll be back with you on DC Today, and then we'll have the Dividend Cafe in your inbox on Friday. So as always, it's been really fun uh, being with you this week. Hope to do it again really soon. And if I don't speak to you, have a great Labor Day weekend. Thank you.